No joke, there was a time where I literally had to make cream of mushroom soup every single day for about two months because it was one, super popular in the restaurant, and two, we actually use it in a few other recipes. This thing is jam-packed with wild mushrooms. It is so dang delicious. I know you're gonna love this recipe. I don't know about you, but my first experience with cream of mushroom is the can. Everyone pour it out onto their roasts or into some sort of casserole. Let me tell you something, do not keep that thing around anymore because this soup, when it's homemade, oh my gosh, it is so good. And it's very, very easy to make, few ingredients. But of course, we are gonna start off with little prep. Sound good? Let's cook. We're gonna kick off this recipe with a yellow onion. I just happen to have a leftover one, that's why the ends are gone. So what we're gonna do is slice it in half and then of course remove that outside peel. Next, I'm gonna small to medium dice it. Now, you don't have to be too particular here because we are gonna puree the soup and these onions are gonna essentially get down to just about nothing. So don't go crazy about the actual size. We're gonna set it to the side in a bowl. We're gonna take that and a little bit of unsalted butter right over to our cooktop where I have a large pot over low to medium heat. We're gonna add in the unsalted butter and unsalted because I want to control the salt content. Now we're gonna add in the onions. Go ahead and grab a wooden spoon or even a rubber spatula. We're just gonna mix everything together just to get things to start cooking. And this is gonna take about 35 to 45 minutes, but we are going to occasionally come back every five minutes or so and give it a quick stir. And honestly, just like when I say during my soup making or my sauce making, the caramelization of the onions is one of the most important procedures in the entire recipe. It will bring so much flavor. The natural sugars in the onions, it's just gonna take it to another level. So be sure to take the time to do this. Like I said, 40 to 45 minutes or so, it will get them just right. Now, I've got a gigantic bowl of fresh mushrooms. I'm going to be using in this recipe some portobello mushrooms, some baby portobello mushrooms, some regular button mushrooms, and some of my personal favorites, shiitake mushrooms. No, don't worry. I'm not using all these mushrooms in this recipe. Don't want to freak you out. I just want to show you all the different varieties. And with that being said, absolutely have a day in this recipe. There's nothing that shouldn't go in here as it relates to mushrooms. If you've got trumpet royales, oysters, maitakis, all are good in a cream of mushroom soup. If you're like me, maybe you want to be a little bit more economical. You don't have $200 to spend on truffles to make in a cream of mushroom soup. Find out what's on sale or just use button mushrooms, or just use carminis, or use a combination like I'm using here. The point is, use what you have, use what you can make. I promise you, it'll still be delicious in the end. Here's what we're gonna do next. It doesn't matter what kind of mushrooms you use, you need to wash them down. So go ahead and wet a paper towel, and then what you do is simply give them a little rub on the outside, remove any unwanted dirt or any particles on the mushroom cap or the stems as well if you decide to use these, just until they're washed and free of any of that. So now to slice. What I like to do is slice the end off, roll it over, and then slice down. The first slice is to help it so it doesn't rock back and forth. So give it a little slice, roll it back over, slice down. This is perfect. These are butt mushrooms. We're going to do the exact same thing with those baby portobello mushrooms. Slice the end off, roll it over, and slice again. And now for shiitake mushrooms, I am going to remove the stems. Now, the stems are good. They are absolutely good. They're a little bit chewy. But however, what I do like to do is set them to the side in a bowl, pop them in the freezer later when I decide to make vegetable, chicken, or beef stock. Now to slice them, stack them three or four high, and then thinly slice them as best you can all the way down. Again, we are gonna set these to the side. And then last but not least, we've got some big portobello mushrooms. Just going to remove that stem out by rocking it back and forth, and then grab a spoon and carve out the gills. They're a little bit bitter and just not what I want in this recipe. I suppose you could use them in there, but they do alter the flavor. Once they are carved out, here's what I like to do. I like to slice in thirds, turn it to the side, and then thinly slice it just as best you can. Don't get too crazy. Again, we are gonna puree everything until it's smooth. And at this point, go ahead and take those mushrooms and add it to a very large bowl with all of the other prepared mushrooms. Okay, I forgot to tell you, set some of the sliced prepared mushrooms just to the side, maybe about a cup or so, because we're gonna use them as a garnish in the end. Just wanna make sure you know that before you put them all in there and they're no good. 
here's what we do now. Last but not least, I'm just going to run a few garlic cloves through a garlic press. And like I've always said, I'm sick of chopping garlic in this life, so garlic press it is, my friends. Go ahead and scrape all of that goodness off there right into a bowl. We're going to take that along with our mushrooms right over to the cooktop. We are going to give our onions a little stir. You can see they are nice and brown. They're tender. They're sweet. Just absolutely love caramelized onions. And at this point, what you want to do is go ahead and grab that finely minced garlic because what I'm going to do is pop it right in the bowl and then just give it a little stir over that same low to medium heat. And I like to say that once you smell garlic, it's done. That's how fast it cooks. At this point, what we're going to do, because we need a little bit more fat, is I'm going to add in some olive oil. You could use butter as well. Because mushrooms soak up so much, you're going to need a little bit more fat in there. That's why I add it at this stage. We're going to crank the heat up to medium high. Don't worry, the mushrooms will protect the onions so they do not burn. We're trying to get a little saute on these mushrooms just to further enhance the flavor. After about 15 minutes or so, they will completely cook down. That big old pot of mushrooms is now all the way at the bottom. Kind of reminds me of cooking spinach a little bit. Once it does get to this consistency, I'm going to deglaze with a little bit of white wine. I prefer Chardonnay or even Sauvignon Blanc or maybe even a Pinot Grigio would be great here. Cook it down for about five minutes or so until the mushrooms have absorbed most of the wine. This is absolutely perfect, looks fantastic, but we do need to make a roux here to get this soup nice and thick. So I'm gonna add in some all-purpose flour, go ahead and grab that wooden spoon again, mix everything together until it is completely combined. This may take a few minutes because those mushrooms need to soak up everything. It will be very thick. This looks fantastic, this is great. I'm going to next add in chicken stock. You could absolutely use vegetable stock or even water, but chicken or veggie stock is going to give you a lot more flavor. Now what we want to do is turn the heat up just a little bit to high heat. Remember from medium high when sauteing the mushrooms, we want to bring it to a boil to sort of activate the roux. You can see how much thicker it is now. This is absolutely perfect. What I'm going to do is grab a hand blender. Now if you have only a blender, fine. Go ahead and puree it on high speed. Be sure to remove that little center cap with a towel over top so it doesn't explode when you puree it. But what we want to do is get the soup really nice and smooth. This looks fantastic. And just like in my potato soup recipe, if you get to this stage and your soup is not thick at all, it's absolutely one of the top five questions I always get. I made the roux for some reason. It didn't thicken. It does happen. I, I wish I knew the exact science of why things don't happen, but it just sometimes does not work out in your favor when it comes to thickening things. So if this is you, stir up a half cup of cornstarch with a third cup of water. Make sure it's completely combined. Add it to the soup. Whisk it. Make sure it's all in there. Bring it to a boil that sort of activates it just like it does in the roux, and you should be good to go. Okay? Here's what we do now. To finish this soup off, I'm going to add in some heavy whipping cream. Go ahead and grab your spoon and mix it all together. Now, it is already going to have sort of a creamy texture because mushrooms aren't very dark, but the cream will help add fat and it will change the color a little bit. We're, of course, going to season well with sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. And for garnishes, this one is optional. Just some chopped fresh parsley, but definitely add in some fresh thyme. It really alters the flavor and it's super good. Now, what we're going to do is set a saute pan on high heat. We're going to hit it with some olive oil. Remember that one and a half to two cups of mushrooms I told you to set aside? What we're going to do is just give this a quick saute, maybe four to five minutes. We want to get them browned. You could even take them further than this here if you want to get them really caramelized up. I'm more using it as a garnish at the end for the soup. But do be sure to season it with salt and pepper. And I've got a little bit of the parsley and thyme left over. So just a pinch or two added in there just for some nice colors. Once everything is mixed in, go ahead and take this and your soup over to the countertop. Okay, a few quick things here. If you want to take this to the next level, you can finish it off with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and Tabasco sauce. Now, one of the best chefs I ever worked for made some of the most delicious soups around, and even in culinary school, the recipes there, they finished all their soups with Tabasco and Worcestershire sauce. You've seen me do it a few times in my soups. Just to give you an option, you can do it. Also, if you don't have fresh thyme, you can absolutely sub in 
rosemary will still be absolutely delicious in this recipe. And my friends, I say it to you every single week. You understand these fundamental basic techniques, taking the time to caramelize those onions, taking the time to use wild mushrooms, brushing off any dirt, cooking them down to concentrate the flavor. All of these things are great foundational techniques to put into your everyday cooking. That way, your homemade food from scratch will always taste better, and it always does. That is my promise to you. Now it's time to plate up in slow-mo. I've got a nice big bowl here. We are gonna fill this thing up, my friends, with tons of creamy mushroom soup. I'm gonna add on a few tablespoons of those sauteed mushrooms. It's just a really nice finishing touch. And then for a little bit more, I've got some leftover parsley and thyme. And man, oh man, check out this beauty. And this soup by itself is absolutely delicious. So many wonderful wild mushroom flavors. I mean, just wow. And if you still got Aunt Bonnie's green bean casserole recipe and it calls for canned mushroom soup, use this. It will take it to a whole other level. I can promise you that. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like and share this video, and definitely check out this video right here. I made it just for you. We'll see you on there.